I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. This week, we're going to return to our Python playlist and we're going to connect to, to Oracle and we're going to do all of the CRUD statements, the create, read, update, and delete statements uh, that you might want to do in your Python scripting against an Oracle 11G database. Uh, this is very tricky sometimes and Oracle can be uh, a bit tricky to connect to sometimes and you need to know your way around. Uh, but uh, in this example, I think you'll find a good way of doing it. So without further ado, let's get to our Oracle database scripting with Python. Okay, so what I did was I created a couple of tables in my Oracle database. And so just before we started, what I'd like to do is uh, get a sense of those tables and check those out for you. So you can see what's happening in there. So uh, first we'll select uh, star from my Oracle table, which is one we used in some previous uh, stuff that we worked on. And I created a new one this time and we'll say select star from my Oracle used to say when each of the messages in the first table were used so that we can do a join between those two and we'll add and remove records from the second uh, from the second table. So in the first one, you can see, uh, hi, this is a mess from Oracle. That's number one. Number two is Oracle is pretty awesome. And then you can see those message IDs being used in the second table and uh, with a date associated date attached and we'll be inserting and removing records from the second table so that when we uh, do a query on both we'll, we'll get uh, different uh, results each time. And I'll go ahead and create a new file in my Python installation there and uh, in, from the idle shell and that's going to give us a blank canvas to work with. Now we're going to import PyODBC as uh, Pyo and we'll import uh, time so that we can pause our execution as we're as it's rolling so that we can see what's going on. Make sure you go back and check out our earlier video on how to use Python on Access Databases because that'll show you how to install PyODBC if you don't have it installed already uh, using, using pip. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to create a connection string I'm not sure if I'm going to use this exact one uh, that you see here by the end of the video. I might actually change it to use a different format uh, for the database that I'm uh, connecting to. So pay attention to that and you'll, you might see that one change before the end here. But what we'll do is uh, we've got our connection string. We'll create a cnn equals pio.connect for our, our connection and then we'll uh, create our cursor variable uh, with cnn.cursor and uh, we'll print starting. Uh, so that we give a little bit of feedback to the user so they can sort of see what's happening as the uh, as the uh, video rolls along. And then for my SQL statement, I'm going to add together those two uh, tables. I'm going to join together those two tables and uh, to get kind of a reasonable output. We're not using a pandas data frame here. This is uh, not using pandas. It's just purely just using PyODBC. So uh, so I'll, I'll select two, uh, two character uh, for the uh, ID and then uh, uh, for the my, I'll get the message uh, that's part of that one and then I'll get the date used uh, from the uh, used table and I'll call that one uh, USD and the other table I'll call MOT. So I'll say from Oracle table, my Oracle table, MOT as an alias and then I'll join uh, my uh, Oracle used uh, as a USD and then uh, I'll join that on USD uh, message ID is equal to MOT.ID and that's gonna uh, give us a nice little join statement so that you can get a sense of uh, that you don't need to just select from a single table if you're using ODBC with Oracle uh, you can do a great big query and get all kinds of results uh, from many tables or views or whatever uh, whatever it is that you want to get data from. So uh, then we'll use our cursor and we'll do cursor.execute and SQL as the argument there. And then to take a look at that we can go ahead and do a for row in cursor.fetchall 
and then we'll for each row we'll just print the row off and it'll give us in brackets each you know the contents of each row and that's very handy for being able to see uh, what's on each uh, what's on each row and what's in in our table so when we see one that one uh, that is our R in CRUD our read uh, so that should give us back everything that's in the table and then we'll ask our procedure to sleep for five seconds so that we can sort of pause on that to see what's happening and uh, and then uh, for our create the C in CRUD we'll we'll do an insert statement I'll call it SQL underscore INS and uh, and we'll do uh, just a basic insert statement into the use table so we'll say insert into my oracle underscore used and uh, we'll add our field names in there ID uh, my uh, message ID and then a date and uh, date used and then uh, we can add um, we'll say values and then we're going to use seven here and for the ID that's the next ID in, in the uh, table a message ID will be one so it'll be that first Oracle message that you saw uh, in the first table and then we'll say to date uh, as our argument uh, and we'll say 2020 0928 and then we're going to specify our formatting because Oracle is uh, fussy about dates and uh, that statement's going to give us a nice little insert statement uh, and we can go ahead and run that for our uh, insert and then we'll go ahead and and we'll do uh, an execute statement so we'll say cursor.execute uh, sql underscore ins that's going to execute the insert statement and then uh, make sure when you're doing your oracle uh, commands for that change any data you got to put a commit statement afterwards otherwise uh, the databases will Will, will not commit the changes, they'll accept it, but won't commit it, and so you'll see weird results if you don't do that. So make sure you put a commit after that, and then uh, we'll put a print inserted, and now check, check out the results. So what I'll do here is to check the results of the table is I'm gonna run the same query that we did earlier. I'll just copy and paste that into the uh, uh, just below there so that we've got something to to look at um, so we can see what the changes are uh, in the table after we run that insert statement and we'll do the same thing we'll we'll do a time dot sleep uh, for five seconds that'll pause our execution uh, so that we can sort of get a break in what's happening it won't all just go out at once um, and then we can carry on and from there uh, we'll do the same thing we'll create a SQL underscore update uh, variable and that one will will populate with an update statement for the Oracle database so we'll go ahead and we're going to update the uh, statement we just did uh, we'll say update my Oracle used and then we'll set uh, uh, the date let's move the date so we'll set the date used uh, equal to say the next day um, and we'll put a two date on that because Oracle's fussy about those dates. Uh, 2020, 09, uh, 29. So we'll change it to 29th and uh, we'll uh, specify our formatting as well, uh, which is uh, the uh, year, day, month. And uh, that's going to give us uh, our update statement. Uh, but we'll make sure that we put a where on there as well. Uh, so that we don't update the whole table that would be bad and uh, we can go ahead and do that now and that'll finish up our statement there uh, and then we can go ahead and do uh, cursor.execute just like we did in our previous uh, example for insert and we'll do execute sql underscore update and that is going to send the statement to the server for execution and then we've got to make sure we put our cursor.commit on there, otherwise you're, you might not see your update when you go back and try to select it the next time because um, uh, it'll make it as far as the server, but it won't get committed. Uh, so uh, give some uh, feedback to the user, updated, now check. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll copy those, uh, those lines for the execution just so it spits it out on screen. 
um, and uh, that's going to show us the same query again after we've done our update and uh, so we can uh, take a look at that data and then we can move on and we'll do the same thing for delete uh, just as our last um, statement here we'll do uh, sql underscore del and we'll say uh, is equal to delete uh, from uh, my oracle used uh, where uh, ID is equal to seven, and that'll <clears throat> that'll delete that row that we just put in there uh, that we can see in our previous um, uh, statements, uh, and that'll sort of demonstrate how to to do a delete statement against Oracle uh, using Python here with ODBC. So we'll we'll run a cursor dot execute uh, SQL underscore del like we did before. And uh, and then we'll uh, we'll do a print um, <clears throat> a print command. Or, oh no, wait, we got to do our uh, a cursor dot commit. Make sure you always do your commit statement. Don't be afraid of commitment. Um, and uh, then we'll do our print statement. Uh, print deleted. Uh, please check or now check. And, uh, and that'll give us some feedback uh, so that the user can see what's going on. We'll go ahead and do the same uh, few commands that we did last time uh, for the, um, just to show, um, you know, for row and cursor dot fetch all, uh, print the row, and then uh, time sleep, it will sleep for five seconds before, the, before we uh, uh, move on. And then we can say uh, print process complete, uh, closing our connections. Now make sure whenever you connect to, to a server uh, like this and you run some commands, always make sure you close your cursor and always make sure that you close your uh, connection when you're done. And uh, I didn't include it in this video, but you'll probably want to add some error handling so that if you, if you do get uh, a screwed up uh, response and you get an error, uh, your procedure will still go and close the connection afterwards. That's, that's a better way of doing it, but for today uh, we're just, uh, just going to run all this stuff against the server and see what we get. And uh, I think that's everything that we want to do. We've got a create statement, a read, we've got an update and a delete statement, and I'm just going to go ahead and take a look here, make sure, oh, I've got an extra bracket there. And uh, I think I'm going to actually change the way that uh, the uh, connection uh, parameters, so the, the connection string, I'm going to use a different way of connecting. Uh, this way is not the best way, and so I'm just going to paste in one that I've, that I've used before, and this is a different way of uh, formatting your connection string, so uh, make a note between the two and try both if you can't get one to work or the other. And uh, then I'll go ahead and I'm going to hit F5 and we'll see what we get here in our output window in idle. Okay, there's our six uh, messages or the six times that they've been used. The two messages have been used six times. Uh, we did an insert and you can see now there's seven rows in there. And then we did an update <clears throat> and uh, you can see that the update happened. It's on the last row of the first message. And then uh, we did a delete statement and we ran the same output and we've got a closed um, and closing connection after that. So it looks like we ran without any errors. Um, so you can see the output is uh, just, you know, by the fetch, uh, the fetch all in the ODBC just gives you the, the row in brackets. And uh, we've got our messages. There's four messages for the uh, for the first message and uh, the second message was used three times. Uh, it was first on the 28th uh, was the first insert that we did and then we did an update and now you can see on the 29th uh, that last message is, is on the 29th now so we updated that one. And then uh, on a, after we did the delete you can see uh, that that message is no longer there. And with that, it looks like we got all the results that we were looking for. And that is how you use Python on Oracle. I hope you enjoyed our discussion today on how to connect to Oracle and, and get data out of Oracle using Python. 
And if you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And when you see the bell, please click the bell so you'll be notified of any new content that I put up on the channel. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please put it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have uh, about working with Oracle data uh, with Python. Uh, have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.